Obsidian has a money problem. Now, I'm not saying the development's going to stop or the team are going to come bankrupt and it's going to disappear. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Obsidian, even though it's a free application, is expensive. <laughs> Let me explain. So we've got the sync. We have Obsidian Sync, which allows you to sync across devices, which is great. Um, it is free. You can see it's a free application. And then we have the, the Catalyst package, which is your choice to buy. Uh, the commercial package, which again, your choice to buy, gives you access to stuff earlier on. But when you scroll down, we've got the two add-on services. And this is Sync. And if you use a PC or a laptop or a laptop or a PC or basically more than one device, you need to use Obsidian Sync, really or you use a cloud service. So what this kind of does for new users is said, okay, Obsidian, it's a great app, but if you want to use it on multiple devices, you need to use another app. So now you need Dropbox or OneDrive or iCloud or Google Drive or whatever cloud service you want to use. Some of those are buggy depending on the operating system you're on, which again, the things you need to navigate when you want to just start using the app Publish is something that most people won't need to use, so don't worry about this. Um, but still, if you want to share something online as a blog, it, it's it's not exactly cheap. But Sync, that's $8. And when you look at it, okay, that's that's quite a bit. For those of you that were early birds, you'll know, actually, this was half price as an early bird, which was me. But now you're like, okay, that's quite a bit. And if we scroll down and we go into the actual Obsidian Sync, you see it's $10 a month. So it's actually $10 a month or $8 if you buy it annually a year round. And when you scroll down, it tells you everything that's going on. And that, on the outset, looks kind of expensive. But when you do a little bit of digging, if you have an Obsidian account and you go into the account section, so you can create an account for free and now you have an Obsidian account, you can then see the account. And it's 40% off for anyone in education and non-profit associations. So there is actually a 40% discount on this sync service so obsidian sync can be 40 percent off now i think that's like what's that five dollars if you buy it annually or six if you buy it monthly something like that i'm not great percentages in my head but that that's something i would want to see straight away like in the pricing tab or in the add-on tab not hidden away that some people some obsidian users don't even know that exists like i've i've spoken to discord users in well, obsidian discord users that have been using obsidian for over a year and their students their phd students or master students that could potentially get this discount and they don't know about it so they just use uh, another sync service cloud or whatever that's something i think is a, an easy win for the obsidian team again I have no affiliation with the Obsidian team. I'm just speaking my mind here, but I think that's an easy win to add it to the pricing page or add it to the sync page, the add-on sync page, where it becomes obvious, oh, okay, actually, it's not quite that expensive. It's a little bit cheaper, but still, $5, $6 a month to sync across devices? Is that really worth it when you consider other applications like Notion or Remnote or anything that's based on the cloud, really? Typically, it's free or reduced in price. And you're like, Okay, and then we have the argument of, is it local, like privacy, security, safe? Or like is, is it worth paying that money or the time, the technical understanding to sync it up with sync thing or whatever service you're gonna use? Is it worth it to be secure and safe? That, that's the big question. And I don't think many new Obsidian users, I'm thinking broader here, I, I'm, I'm thinking like Obsidian competing against Notion, because at the moment Obsidian is like a really niche tool, as uh, Stefan or Capano recently said on a live stream, we were saying that those that are using Obsidian are really niche, they're in the PKN tool for thought thing, it's like a 0.01% of general population. But for it to move out of that, why would anyone want to use Obsidian if you've got to pay for it to sync across devices? Apple Notes, goes across all your Apple devices. Samsung Notes, yes, I know isn't great, but it's on Samsung devices, which I used to use on my phone like oh, four or five years ago now. It was a while back. Um, Evernote is another one that you could use for free that syncs across devices, but you don't have those features. So is it, is it worth it? That's the big question. Is it worth paying for sync? And I think as we as we move towards supporting Obsidian, this is where the big question comes in for me when it comes to Obsidian, because it's so different. It isn't so packed. It isn't backed by investors, like supported by investors. Uh, and when we go into the Obsidian page, you can see Obsidian Merch. So at the bottom of this, uh, you can see down the bottom, you've got Obsidian Help, uh, and then down into the community, you've got the Merch Store. And this takes you to here. So Obsidian is supported, one, by Merch, 
to by the add-on services. So that can be Obsidian Sync or Obsidian Publish. And then when we come all the way back to, oh, that's not what I wanted to click on. If we come all the way back to here, the Catalyst and Commercial Licenses. So that's where, from what I can see on the outset, that's where the money comes from Obsidian, where tools like Notion and most other PKM, PKM apps get their money from investors. And they've deliberately chosen that. If I uh, have a look here, I think I'll go backwards a little bit, make this big so you can listen to this. I think that for now, we want to stay really small. We want to be as small as, as we can be because, um, you know, one of the other things that's really important that made me want to join Obsidian is that from an early stage, um, Sheeta and Erica decided that they didn't want to bring on investors, um, like venture capital yeah. investors. So you can hear the team, the small team of Obsidian, isn't backed by venture capital investors, which I think to me is a good thing. It means they're not constrained by what they have to build towards. They're not focused on money, income, all, all the other things that come with investors. However, the money would be nice. Let's, let's just be real. It, w it would be nice. Um, and that's where I think the interesting sort of conversation happens with, okay, Obsidian is this small app that I don't know whether they want to get big. I would assume they want to get big. I would love it if more people used Obsidian or apps like Obsidian. If it is just a case of using Markdown, obviously LogSeek is very similar. You can sort of use the apps interchangeably to some extent, but the canvas in Obsidian and the whiteboard in LogSeek are different. So they don't work together. And this is where I'm like, everyone just work together, but it doesn't work like that. Anyway, getting back to it, when it comes to the money, where, where does it come from? Like, where does it come from for Obsidian to keep going, keep developing? It's it's the community. It's the supporting community. And this is where I want to move sort of a little bit sideways into a tweet that TFT Hacker brought up, was talking about plugins and paying for plugins, the paying for the development of plugins. And this is a conversation where I'm like, okay, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Minecraft, I apologize. This is the analogy I have in my head. Minecraft is developed by Mojang. Mojang is the, the main group, the main team uh, behind Minecraft. So you have vanilla Minecraft, but then underneath that you have modded Minecraft and you can get texture packs and, and skins and you can buy different add-ons for the game to change your experience. Some of those add-ons are just the way you look or some of the modded elements of Minecraft add blocks, add features, sometimes completely changing the game. And those modded developers get paid because the community want to support those developers. And in my head, that's the same as what TFT Hacker is talking about here with Obsidian plugins. Because Obsidian, unlike, I'm, I'm generalizing here, but unlike every other <laughs> application, the, the community in Obsidian just wins. Like when you look at Rome, there's hardly any community plugins compared to Obsidian. LogSeek, I think is the same. Notion doesn't even have that as a thing. Like it doesn't exist. Well, you could argue APIs and integrations, but that's not the same thing. Yeah, it's just not. So Obsidian has this, in, in my opinion, unique like place in the PKM tools for thought market with their plugins and add-on plugins and building this ability to create your own Obsidian, modded Obsidian, as it were. But what TFT Hacker is saying here is, okay, these developers need support. And when we actually look at the Obsidian plugin, like, wow, I think there's what, 800, 900 at the moment? I can't keep up with it. Most people struggle to keep up with it unless you're in it. And then you have plugins that are doing the same thing. Some plugins are become redundant because another plugin does it all and more. Then you have plugins that aren't maintained and should really be archived. And some plugins that aren't supported, they still work, but can be a little bit buggy with some of the newer plugins. And all these interactions make it complicated. And as someone that uses Obsidian day to day for work, for personal and for other stuff on the sides as well, it's it's part of my day. And I'm still struggling to navigate all of this stuff. Onboarding in Obsidian, like I, I can't imagine onboarding right now <laughs> into Obsidian, knowing all of these com knowing all of these plugins. And that's where I don't know whether that's uh, the the teams fault, issue, thing to concern themselves with uh, when it comes to the onboarding process of Obsidian or whether that's the community. I know I love the community. They are amazing. You people are amazing. But, but the Discord is chaotic. <laughs> it's 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 madness when you when you go into discord as someone that is not familiar with discord there are more channels than you know what to do with there are more conversations to know what you do than you know what to do with and there are threads all over the place people linking everywhere back and forth 
and it can be very overwhelming, even for someone that uses Discord a lot. I only go in three or four of the channels, really. So there's so much information in there that it's hard to really grasp what's going on as a new person, especially a new new person to Obsidian and a new person to Discord. That can be scary. And then you have the Obsidian Forum, which, again, is a great resource, but also quite overwhelming because there are so many things going on there. So what I end up doing is just going to either the help documentation, which I'll show you in a second, or YouTube, which I think most people will go to YouTube for like the onboarding process. And when we have a look, so I'm just going to share a little bit of a comparison here. You look at Notion, we've got, uh, actually, let's come out of that one. When you look at Notion, we've got the help docs. So when you go to resources, you can go to the help center, and these are help information just for Notion. This isn't the community, this is Notion. And you see, new to Notion, start here. And there's your, your video lesson, a, a brief explanation of what's going on, and you can carry on going down to any of these sections, and it explains what's going on with a, a GIF, a couple of videos, and things like this. And this is what my Obsidian onboarding course is, going to be like eventually obviously there's loads of things that needs to go in there but that's what i'm working on when we look at the obsidian help at the moment there is nothing on the main web page you you can't you can't come up here and go resources or help or find thing you you need to if you don't know this you, you wouldn't find out but you need to click on the learn more and this is where it takes you to the obsidian help and this is just my experience with the obsidian help search is great if you know what you're searching for, if you don't know what you're searching for, it's quite hard to find out what's going on. When you go to get started, create a vault, this sort of stuff makes sense. But when you come into the customization, why is there two here? It, I understand why it is the way it is, but I much prefer this learning than this. Um, and that's why I created the Obsidian onboarding for my own learning. It wasn't for, it, w it wasn't intending on being a course. I didn't want to be like, hey, I'm going to create the go-to Obsidian course. No, it, it started out being, I need to organize my understanding of Obsidian and the help doc doesn't help me. I need to organize it in a way that helps me. So I started adding in different references, links to GitHub repos and links to community plugin posts and Discord posts and things like that. And that's what the course has become. It's become my help doc uh, that other people can get. But because it's stuff that I do on my own time, I charge for it. Link in description. That's, that's a whole other conversation. But you don't need it. You don't need to go there at all. YouTube is the best place, in my opinion, to learn Obsidian. Just follow the videos if you've got the time. If you don't have the time, then go to a course. I mean, uh, Nicole's got a course. I think Nick's got a course. Sandy has a course. But I don't think he's updated it because he's on Tana. I can't remember. I think Brian Jenks might have one. I don't remember. Anyway... Obsidian courses, great, but at the end of the day, you need something, like the Obsidian team, in my opinion, need something as like a help center that is a little bit more, yeah, just a little bit more <laughs> than the Obsidian help. This is just my personal feedback, my opinion. I could be completely wrong. Shout at me in the comment section if you think so. But there's some of the thoughts I have about the sync costing, where the money goes, where the money comes from, and getting people onboarded into obsidian slightly easier that's that's what i want to talk about so let me know in the comment section below because i i want to keep this conversation going like i'm intrigued to see what happens where it's going and obviously if the obsidian team have any questions or feedback or thoughts let me know as well